really excited. I am here with Mike Capone, uh, the CEO of Click. And what I want to talk about is the future of business intelligence and data and a little bit about Click and how you see your, your company position in the market. We are here in London um, <laughs> and we have the beautiful bells of Westminster Abbey uh, in the background, makes it very authentic hopefully. <laughs> um, we've just had the Queen and the Duchess of Cornwall visiting the Abbey for its 750th anniversary. So right. this, is, this is good, makes it very real I think. It does, it yeah. does. London is one of my favorite cities in the world, yeah. if not my favorite, yeah, and I'm thrilled to be here. Um, and the bells do make for a lovely backdrop, although six hours later, I'm a little, know, it's I starting know. to wear I me know. out a little bit. We've now listened to the bells for four hours. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, and it's cloudy, so just to <laughs> confirm that we are indeed uh, in London. Absolutely. Yeah. So Click, tell me a little bit more about Click and what it is. Sure, so Click uh, is data and analytics company. We were a pioneer in sort of the world of visual analytics. So one of the first companies around to actually um, build technology and software that allows, empowers end users to work with data in a, a much more visually appealing graphical way. Yeah. Um, and uh, we, you know, we kind of grew up in that space. And since that time, we've now expanded to be a full kind of data platform uh, company, not just visual analytics, but um, kind of data capture change. Um, uh, change data capture, uh, data cataloging, as well as the analytics platform, and now machine learning and AI. So, so and then hugely exciting area to be in at the moment, and massive change happening in the industry. Yeah. we've seen Tableau, one of your competitors, being swallowed up by by Salesforce. Um, how do you position Click in the market? What's your unique selling point? How do you position yourself against Power BI and Tableau, some of the other major players in this market? Yeah, you're you're not exaggerating when you say there's a lot of change going on. It's very dynamic right now. Yeah. I think there are two things that set us apart. First is is independence. So we are the last independent uh, provider of analytics at scale. So there's smaller companies out there, but with Power BI being part of Microsoft and now Tableau being part of Salesforce, we really are the ones How who are- How many customers have you got at the moment? 50,000, okay, 50,000, yeah. yeah. So That's we, you know, scale, yeah, yeah. And I think, I think they're all here at, the, yeah. at this event. It feels like we have some great customers here. Uh, but uh, being being independent and also being private, so you know we're, we're privately held, um, allows us to do things. So we're solely focused on data and analytics, nothing else. Mm -hmm. um, we're not trying to sell CRM uh, or <laughs> desktop software or email. Um, we sell analytics, um, and we don't we don't want your data. So a lot of what you're seeing in the industry today is this thing called data hoarding, where um, vendors are trying to get more and more of your data on their platform. In some cases, to make it sticky and do more things with it. In some cases, um, perversely, to sell it back to you. So they, they take your data and then they charge you to get it out, um, either uh, through connector fees or things, or by um, trying to mash it up with other stuff and selling it back to you. So we're, we're none of that. We're just about the outcome. We want to work with our customers the way they want to, the way they want to work with us. So I think. Um, that piece of it is really important. And then the, the second piece of differentiation is this end-to-end -end platform. So when I talk to CDOs or CIOs, they talk about the visual analytics, but often they'll say, you know what the hardest thing is? It's getting the data ready for analytics, getting it out of these locked up operational systems, my ERP system. And, uh, and with the technology that we built and acquired over the last year, we now have the ability to actually build that end to end, we call it the data supply chain, mm -hmm. and get data out of the operational systems, make it pervasive in the organization, and then, then have ubiquitous access to it through all the analytics users. In, in terms of the, the future of analytics, the future of, of data for organizations, um, data now has become the fuel of this new fourth industrial revolution, the bell. Bell stop. The bell stop. The bell stop. Oh, yeah. It's magic. It's magic. <laughs> the, so the, 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 where, where do you see the field going? Uh, data has become such an important asset for most businesses mm -hmm. nowadays. Analytics in the next five, ten years, where, where, where do you see the major, major routes? What do you see happening? Yeah, you know, there's no CEO uh, that is turning down a conversation about analytics now and how it can help uh, make their business better, make them more competitive and win in the marketplace. So it's, it's a great time to be in the industry. Mm -hmm. uh, the, you know, the, the field is evolving, it's evolving fast. And with the advances in computing power, machine learning and AI, um, we're gonna be able to do more and more things with analytics. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, in my keynote earlier today, I mentioned that 90% of large organizations by next year will have appointed uh, a CDO, a chief mm -hmm. data officer. Uh, at the same time, the, th those budgets around that function are growing 
um, you know, in mid 20%, um, uh, so it's big compared mm -hmm. to spending in other areas. Uh, I think what you're gonna see is um, this thing called democratization of data. We want data in everybody's hands, but more importantly, we want it embedded in the processes. So it still kind of feels like this thing on the side. I've got this visualization, this chart, this graph, this report, this dashboard. Um, what we want to be able to do is feed analytics into every process, every operational process, every strategic or operational decision. Mm -hmm. You have to have the data in front of you at that time. So the concept of it embedded is going to be important. And then, you know, without getting um, ridiculous with all the hype around machine learning and AI because there have been some really big companies who have way over promised on uh, AI and way under delivered yeah. um, that set the industry back a little bit. Um, our, our, our philosophy is that it's going to be embedded as part of the analytics platform um, and it's going to augment um, end users, not, not necessarily replace them, yeah. but make them better. I see lots of organizations trying to do this in practice mm -hmm. and then not necessarily being very successful because what they're doing is they're, they're just buying a piece of software, mm -hmm. they're buying a nice pretty front end, put a data lake underneath yeah. and then give it to everyone saying, now you have, we have democratized our data, <laughs> All right. good, good luck finding the answer. Yeah. So what do you see as some of the... The, the biggest challenges some of your, your clients are facing and maybe ways to overcome that? Yeah, so that, that is a very common mistake and it's a huge mistake. Um, you know, the big data warehouse or data lake in the sky concept, it's gonna throw everything in there and then you'll be able to answer every single question. Um, the, the piece that's always missing from that is, um, is the governance. And uh, the data needs to be trusted, verified, the lineage needs to be there so people understand what they're looking at. It needs to be curated. That middle step, which is, don't get me wrong, it's really hard. It's really hard to do that middle step. A lot of money has been invested. Mm. Um, but what we've tried to do with our Data Catalyst um, product is actually build a, a robust uh, cataloging platform that allows not only uh, IT professionals and, and uh, data curators uh, the ability to actually go in and examine the data, make sure it's correct, um, tag it with the lineage so you know where it's coming from. Uh, but then help um, end users who can then understand that information better before they start using it. Um, it makes a big difference in terms of how your, um, how your data landscape evolves. And quite frankly, um, what we've seen is end users get super frustrated when the data isn't governed correctly. Mm. Because you know, once somebody builds something on data that's bad, they'll, they'll never go back to it again. Mm. And so that trust, that trust is really important. Click also has put big emphasis on improving data literacy. Yeah. Um, why is that important? You know, I say this a lot that, um, you know, there, the industrial revolution, the way we got out of that was reading and writing, right? We taught people uh, how to educate themselves and read and write. And that, that was part of the, the transformation out of the industrial revolution and then into kind of the, the knowledge age that we're in. Mm -hmm. The next wave is gonna be powered by uh, what, what um, we call data literacy. It's gonna be as important to tomorrow's world as reading and writing was to yesterday's world um, because it's not just enough to be able to, to uh, extract information or build dashboards or graphs or um, you gotta be able to um, interpret information. I can, um, if you give me a data set, I can, I can almost tell you any story I wanna tell you, right? All I gotta do is change the scale on the graph and I can show like a big slope, like yeah, I'm going fast. Or, you know, and, uh, and I can play with the sample size. And so bringing the, the data literacy level up, bringing the intelligence up of everybody in your organization, because virtually everybody's gonna work with data from customer service reps all the way through the CEO, raising that, giving people a fundamental understanding of statistical significance is really important. Mm. Um, and you know, we've set up basically, it's all not for profit. Uh, you know, the, the data literacy org, org uh, is something we've done with some partners, just help companies deal with this. Mm. If you were to give the, the viewers some tips of how do you get on a really successful data journey, how do you turn analytics into something that is really valuable for your business, what would you recommend companies do? So a couple, couple of things, it's a great question. So first, um, you, have to trust your, you have to trust your business to use data in the right way. So yeah. I've had a conversation with a CIO who said, oh, I can't give my end users this information, I'll trust them with it. Yeah. Um, that's not really, that's not a winning strategy in the no. long run. You have to do all the things you're supposed to do to protect the data and make sure it's used the right way, but you have to get there. Um, and what I will say is this concept of in, embedded is really, really important, right? Getting analytics at the point of decision, when somebody needs to make a decision about how to service this customer, how to make an investment, 
Um, that's when they need the analytics. They don't need it at the end of the month on the, on the dashboard. Or they need you need to serve it up in a way that's very consumable. That could be in a mobile app. That could be in you know um, embedded in a process. Um, there's lots of different ways you can do it. But it, the, the 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 timing, that temporal aspect of when the analytics are available is really really important. Very good. Thank you very much. No, thank, thank you. you. It's a pleasure. You, Mike Mike Cabone, CEO of Click. Thank you very much. Thank you.